Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where bada bing, bada boom, New York State is back in play, baby. Just when we thought we were out, they pull us back in. I guess that mean marquee worked. Uh, that's not a great <laughs> message about bullying, but it is a message about political pressure. Because to put a finer point on it, thanks to his handling of the pandemic, and I know some of you vehemently dis disagree with the, with the statement that Andrew Cuomo did, has done a good job. Some of you are very against that. But you can't deny that, bottom line, New York has some of the lowest numbers in the country. We had to deal with this before anyone else, so there was, of course, a learning curve that has to be uh, factored in there. And Cuomo, particularly early on, held daily very popular briefings, which helped craft a, a, a very strong persona for him. Uh, and whether you like it or not, he's become a national figure. You might not care for him, but he's definitely leveled up to the national stage. And to be fair, he's tried many times in the past and failed. But this was very much Cuomo's, Andrew Cuomo's moment. And he wants to be remembered as the governor who did the best job handling coronavirus. Again, you might not agree with that statement, but I think that he can make the case. And he doesn't want to be known as the, as the guy who killed movie theaters. Because also, there's a lot of political money in Hollywood, especially for a Democrat who maybe wants to seek a federal office sometime in the future. I'm sure that's very much on Cuomo's mind. So at first, Cuomo was the people's hero, protecting us in New York City from COVID. And now it's time for him to be Hollywood's hero and reopen New York movie theaters. So, but not so fast. They're not all opening. So start... It's, it's the... It's, it's still, it's, it's a crack in the wall, you know, from the statement that movie theaters aren't essential to now they're beginning to open. So it's, the wall is crumbling. So uh, starting October 23rd, which is this coming Friday, all movie theaters in New York State and counties with an infection rate below 2% for a 14-day average, and this does not include New York City. New York City theaters will remain closed for now. But outside of New York uh, City, Counties that meet those requirements may open starting this coming Friday at 25% capacity or 50 people per screen. They can't go above that, uh, even if it would be 25% of the capacity for the theater. Uh, and make no mistake, as I just said, this does mean that we're on a path to New York City movie theaters opening as well, which is holy ground to Hollywood, as New York City has the most frequent moviegoers in North America. You know, other people, as I've told you before, usually go about once a month to the movies, whereas most people in New York City go every weekend at least once. Um, Los Angeles is also very big, so is San Francisco, and there are other cities to be sure, Atlanta, Austin, but New York City, as I said, is the holy grail. But when will New York City open? Well, I think it depends on the following factors. Number one, how things go with New York State theaters reopening. Do we see a rise in infection rates? For instance, Florida has been reopening very quickly again. They had, you know, very aggressive in the last few weeks. And as a result, they've had a 50% plus increase in new infections just over the past few days. Uh, also important is, of course, who wins the presidential election. I'm just going to leave that statement right there. But in, this con in, the, in the context of this conversation, I'm referring to whether or not we maybe get a national strategy. It might be too late for a national strategy, considering the way the conversation has been shaped around masks and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe we could get one. And then also if a vaccine shows up, which I have to say is looking less and less likely. Um, and also, does anyone feel the vaccine is viable? There's like a lot of things that are, there's a lot of moving pieces. Uh, but I do think that New York City theaters reopening is, and I think the two most important things are how it goes with infection rates and the presidential election. I can, well, well I'll get to it, but I, I think this is starting to look up. Conservatively, though, my guess is that New York City movie theaters won't reopen until after the holidays. The second wave is already here. It's just getting started in the United States. It's quite strong in Europe. And New York City, I believe, will do everything in its power to keep crowds down during the holidays. We have insane crowds here over the holidays, and that, of course, is not what you want during a pandemic. I mean, they've already canceled the traditional Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Times Square ball drop and made them only available on television the way they did the Macy's 4th of July fireworks over the summer. So if they're doing that, I can't imagine they'll want people going into movie theaters. You have to keep in mind that New York City is a special situation because everywhere else in the country, you have to take a car to go to a movie theater. But in New York City, 
you take public transportation. So, and also that creates more of a, you, you exposes people more and it gives them the opportunity to spread coronavirus more. So, and people usually in New York City don't go to the movies in their neighborhood. They'll travel quite far to go to their theater of their choice. Cause you know, you can pretty much get anywhere in the city in an hour. So you have people going on public transportation to get to the movie theater. So it's more likely that they're exposed. And then if they get it, they're more likely to, to, expo uh, to spread it going home. Uh, so I think that that's why New York City is such a special circumstance. It isn't just a political position or a position of being overly cautious. It's that we have a different ecosystem and the way people operate here than anywhere else in, in, in the country. Uh, we're the most European city in terms of, you know, how people get around. So if, you, if you're in another part of the country, you're, you know, you go from a bubble to the movie theater back to your bubble. Uh, you know, you only expose the people in your group. Uh, which of course is horrible, but you know, that's just a decision that you make. But in New York City, you don't have the same luxury. People don't have the same luxury of just infecting their people in their circle. So that's why New York City is such a, such a conundrum with this situation. Uh, now, if New York City's theaters were to open, will people go? On that matter, we all realize the ecosystem that we live in, and I don't think people are gonna go until after the holidays here in New York City. New York City got hit first, and we got hit hard, and it has made a very big impression on all of us. I mean, they had you know, trucks for cadavers, refrigerated trucks parked in the streets. Uh, you know, many stores have said that they have you know, you know, locations in New York City that have not been able to bounce back as their locations in other parts of the country have. New York City, you know, we are aware of the situation that we live in and the dangers that are there. Also, because we have a crappy mayor, our crime has spiked as well. So we have a lot of problems here. There are a lot of problems. We don't have our own mayoral election, I believe, until I think next year. It seems like it's been forever. Ah, oh, we have such a bad mayor. All right, so anyway, everyone blames Cuomo, but you know, it's a blase. All right. All right, but even with all this in mind, I do now see a world, and I'm super cautious, as you can see, where people could maybe start going to the movies in January when things are typically quiet anyway. You know, there's very few people around. Let's have a slow trickle of movies. I can see people starting to go back. I would even, I think, maybe feel comfortable going back in January here in New York City. So I think that's, that's looking good to me. So thanks to Cuomo, 2021, is suddenly back in play. Before Cuomo did this, and you know, as we get close to the election, I do feel that maybe early 2021 would work. I was thinking it wouldn't be till like mid to late 2021, but now I'm starting to think maybe if they're really strict with, you know, the guidelines and how people handle themselves uh, and enforcing masks, you know, when I go to a limited capacity theater, like a small theater in 2021, early 2021, like January, I believe that I would. Now, will Wonder Woman 1984 be the movie to kick things off Christmas Day? Uh, no, but we'll get to her in a moment. But I first want to say that I do believe, because that's really the only big movie on the horizon at this point, because so many other films have moved. But I do think that Universal will go ahead with its 17-day deal with AMC for Freaky and the Crudes 2. Those are small films. They might as well throw AMC a bone uh, and test out the model. Uh, those are two small films again, Freaky in November, The Crudes late November. Uh, and so the deal is, remember, they play in AMC. They can only play in AMC theaters, but who cares? Regal's closed. AMC is the biggest theater chain. So they'll just play in AMC for 17 days. That has to include three weekends. That was the deal. Um, and then they'll be available on digital instead of the usual three-month theatrical you know, w the window before you can go to digital. So I think that sounds pretty good. I think that sounds pretty good. I would be fine with that. Uh, back to Wonder Woman 1984, as I said, I do believe the film will move. I'm not 100%, but I, 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 you know, I think that it could stick to its guns, but I wouldn't advise it. And I hear that Warner Brothers is considering two other dates to move the film. Uh, now, one, of course, as you know, is June. Back to June, baby. June 2021, where Warner Brothers would simply remove its own The Conjuring 3 from June 4th and give that date to Wonder Woman 1984. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to, you know, move in on a spot that another studio has staked out. But the idea that I like is they're also considering Valentine's Day 2021, playing up the Diana and Steve Trevor romantic aspects of the movie. And it does seem very romantic. This is a fantastic date for them. I think that it is a very romantic film. I think, you know, it seems very much like Barbie doll, Saturday morning cartoons for girls. Uh, that's Valentine's Day. It's perfect. Uh, and also the only movie there right now is The Kingsman. I think they can take The Kingsman. I would push The Kingsman out. I'd be like, go ahead and move it, Disney. I'm going to totally destroy you if you don't move that Fox movie. I think Wonder Woman would be 
fantastic there. It would also still have a lot of space to itself as basically being the only game in town. I'm, you know, Mortal Kombat might open in January. You know, the 355 is opening in January. There is a smattering of January movies, but they'll be played out by uh, February 12th. And so I think that's a really great date. And so maybe, you know, you might, you might see them move Wonder Woman to that date instead. Uh, I mean, again, with Christmas, I think the other problem is, is that, you know, there are so many family gatherings for Christmas and New Year's, you know, you're going to be putting people in harm's way. You know, if you wait till the other, you know, you wait till January and February where people are kind of like in their own spaces at that point, you know, traditionally, even without a pandemic, I just think it's a more responsible thing to do. I think you don't want the headlines of risking people's lives to go see Wonder Woman 1984 over the holiday, you know, period. Now, some of you might be like, but why isn't reopening New York State like a light switch, Grace, which instantly turns Hollywood back on? Why aren't all the movie th studios go, oh, quick, let's put our movies back at their original or their, you know, their last round of release dates? Well, that's because L.A. is still offline, Los Angeles, but California Governor Newsom, speaking of governors, has his own mounting pressure, not just for movie theaters, but theme parks as well. There's a planned, uh, I don't know if they already had it, but there's like a planned march, a protest from fans and employees at Disneyland to get those theme parks to open. And I believe Newsom will probably cave soon. As what, you know, I don't know if cave is the right, I think he's a little more adamant. I think Cuomo feels he is being responsible. Newsom obviously feels, I don't know. I don't think Newsom appreciates the, the, the str uh, strong arming by Disney either. But I think that, you know, he just sent a task force down to Disney World to check out their protocols. And I think we've discussed this before. I feel the Walt Disney World protocols seem responsible to me. I think they're probably the best that you could do. And if people want to work and if people want to go and they're enforcing them as strongly as they do, I mean, it's not perfect, obviously, but I think Disney World is doing the best job that you could do. Well, then, you know, who are we to mix in? Just, you know, don't go if you don't think it's responsible. Um, I mean, Florida, as I said, is a mess, which some of you might already be typing, but I don't think that's because of Disney World. In fact, some of you who live in the state have told me that Disney World is probably one of the most responsible businesses right now handling this situation. I believe Florida's problem is from uh, the governor there allowing bars and restaurants to reopen at 100% capacity indoors. That's where I think their big problem is coming from. Although Disney World, if the pictures are true online, and I believe they are, it's getting awfully crowded itself. I think they're a little bit too high on the capacity there. But, you know, uh, I think that people just clearly still don't feel safe, even if the Cinema Safe campaign from uh, the National Association of Theater Owners insists that it is. I mean, for instance, one person pointed out that AMC has a really nice little video they put together to tell you how safe it is to go to their theaters. And they even said they've put in filtration systems at their theaters so that it filters the air for you. That's one of the stipulations that New York State, you know, Cuomo has had for movie theaters. They have to have these really advanced air filters. But if you look at the AMC... Um, uh, commercial, somebody pointed out this out on Twitter because Lord knows nobody would see it if they were just watching the video in real time, but it has little fine print at the bottom of that section that says the filters have been upgraded where possible. So if your state doesn't insist on it uh, and it would be too expensive or, you know, they feel they can get away with not doing the upgrade on the ventilation system, it has not been upgraded. So cinema safe is like cinema kind of safe. Uh, I mean, you can see another movie opened this weekend, this time with Liam Neeson, catnip to many states that have reopened, have been reopened for a while now, and it's still opened on par with Unhinged and The War with Grandpa. This is just how many people are willing to go to the movies right now. And it's not like a, just a sliver of movie theaters are open. I mean, they're, they're almost at 90%, you know, of all theaters open, which just goes to show you, I think that just goes to show you how important New York and Los Angeles are, and also how many people still aren't willing to go even in places that they can go. I mean, sure, Tenet has been able to squeeze out a little bit more money, but in eight weeks, eight weeks, it has yet to match the opening weekend of Inception. I mean, that's bad. Worldwide, Tenet has gotten to 334. It got a little past 300, which is where the industry thought that it would go, you know, at the very least. And so I guess we're now all wondering, when will this thing go to premium video on demand? Remember, it'll be available to purchase first digitally, then rent digitally, then it'll go to streaming. So if you're looking to watch it for free with part of your subscription fee, you're going to be waiting a really long time. If you're willing to buy it, to buy the movie, my guess is you'll be able to do that around Thanksgiving or maybe even Christmas, depending what they do with Wonder Woman. I think the tenant's just going to play for a really long time to try and squeeze out as much money as they can. New Mutants, though, uh, hits digital uh, and physical copies so will be available same day starting uh, November 17th. Uh, but slowly but surely, we are getting more of a top 10. Look at this. It's a smattering of red state targeted movies and Halloween nostalgia, showing that even in a pandemic, Tinseltown still knows how to program. 
Uh, Love and Monsters just barely made into the top 10, but that's because it debuted on digital as well as hit theaters. And on digital, it dominated. Critics and audiences love this movie, including me. It's a real treat. I posted my review on Friday, and just to show you how good it is, it's not even getting review bombed on iTunes for its high price point. That's a good movie. Elsewhere in the iTunes Top 10, Jessica Chastain and Ruby Rose continue to cut a bloody action heroine path of unlikely success, as do warring documentaries, uh, one conservative and one liberal. Then just like at the box office, Hocus Pocus and Beetlejuice are doing well here as well. On Netflix, The Haunting of Hill House and Hubie Halloween continue to dominate. By the way, I've seen Netflix actually advertising for Hubie Halloween, which is very rare for them. They usually just promote the service and let the algorithm do the work. It's a weird plan, but it seems to be working for them. Uh, I'd never watch what they recommend to me on Netflix. I always want to watch the new stuff. I really could not care less about I mean, there's so much stuff out there. I just want to watch the new things. Although I know some of you do like to watch old stuff on these uh, streaming services. So I'm curious, do you watch what Netflix recommends to you uh, via the algorithm? But to me, the real head fly headline on Netflix this weekend is that the trial of the Chicago 7 worked its way up to number three. It just started on the service on Friday. I'm so absolutely thrilled. Usually awards fair does poor on the streaming service. Boys in the Band couldn't crack the top 10, and I was very disappointed that The Five Bloods never really cracked the top 10. It might have been like number 10, like one weekend, but it, you know, it didn't get the attention that I thought that it deserved. But here's Trial of the Chicago 7 at number three. I think thanks to the cast, thanks to Aaron Sorkin, thanks to the subject matter, thanks to the strong reviews. Because, you know, Lord knows they didn't advertise this either. So that's fantastic, though. And I think that it's a good sign for Trial of the Chicago 7's awards chances that it's already broken out of Netflix's rather large Oscar pack. Then on Disney+, Plus, there's the usual suspects yet again, but original movie Clouds did manage to break into the top 10, and Mando's back on the eve of season two. By the way, speaking of The Mandalorian, there will be a new trailer tomorrow night during Monday Night Football, and I will definitely be reacting and breaking it down. Very exciting. As for this coming week, it's another tsunami of new content. This is ridiculous. Where was all this in September when there was nothing to watch? All right, anyway. Wednesday, Netflix debuts its update on Rebecca, while on Thursday, HBO Max drops The Witches. The embargo for The Witches uh, lifts the day before on Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. I watched it over the weekend. Then on Friday, I'll be doing my Rebecca review before that movie drops as well. Uh, then on Friday, the new animated short Once Upon a Snowman hits Disney+, Plus, while Netflix debuts its Disney, uh, debuts, uh, Disney superstar Glenn Keane's animated movie, Over the Moon. Also watch that over the weekend. I'll have a review up for that very, so uh, very soon as well. Uh, plus new series, The Queen's Gambit. That's also debuting on Netflix on Friday. Uh, then over on Apple TV, they're back in it. They have Sofia Coppola's latest film, On the Rocks. Wow, so much to watch. I hope you haven't fallen behind on anything else because here comes a whole new stuff, uh, you know, a whole new block of content that you that is must see. So what will you be watching? What have you been watching? And when do you think that movie going will return in earnest? That means when we start to get numbers that are like not horrible. <laughs> not, not, not necessarily numbers that are amazing, but just numbers that are viable. So when do you think movie going will start uh, in earnest? Uh, and also, when do you think you'll feel comfortable going back to the theater? It might even be now. It might even be now. But if you're like me, again, my answer to that would be, I think January 2021 is starting to look like I might be okay with it. All right, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.